Welcome to a soldering special. This is part one, selecting the correct tools for the job and how to use a soldering iron. There is a massive difference between silver soldering and soft soldering. First of all, I wish to make it clear that silver solder is not silver. A lot of people get very confused by this, particularly one viewer who got really confused because he has a traction engine and this traction engine is positively dangerous. Mercifully, the traction engine is incomplete, so it's not ready for steaming anyway. He sent me some photographs. It really was a bit of a joke, because it was a soft-soldered boiler, and everything was wrong with it. The entire thing was very dirty, so I recommended that he took it into the garden, pressure-washed it, and listed it for spares or repair on a popular internet auction site. But did he listen to me? No, a few days later he posted a photograph on Facebook of the tube plate with an alarming amount of soft solder covering almost all of the tube plate. He also put on with the photograph a comment saying that, look, the boiler is silver soldered. And just in case this viewer is watching this, I do not give misinformation when I phone viewers out of the kindness of my heart to prevent them from injuring themselves with rubbish that they buy online. This short series will be about soft soldering, mainly using the soldering iron method. And later on in the series I will feature small blowtorch soft soldering, which is entirely different to using a soldering iron. And while on the subject of soldering irons, here is one in a box. This is not just any soldering iron, it is an Antex soldering iron. These are made in England, and from experience, I really have found them to be the best type to use. This is one of two that I've recently bought. It's a 25 watt soldering iron, which gets more than hot enough for the job I'm going to show me doing today. When you buy an Antex soldering iron, it's a good idea to buy one of these. It's an Antex soldering iron stand which will hold an Antex soldering iron and certain other types, but not all. I would like to mention that the soldering iron is not currently plugged in. I'm just showing how to remove the tip. It slides off the element bar. Once upon a time, Antex tips had like a circlip around them to hold them in place. That's what's shown on the box, but they're actually not used anymore. The bit is a good fit on the element. It just slides on and off and the instructions do mention to periodically remove the bit to clear any oxidisation. This is also an Antex soldering iron, a very old Antex soldering iron that I bought, I think, about 35 years ago. And believe it or not, I've only just changed the tip. I have actually machined the previous tip in the lathe a few times, but finally I had to buy a new one. Before any viewers write in, to accuse me of advertising Antex soldering irons, let me mention that all these Antex soldering irons in this episode I bought and paid for with my own money. It is not a sponsorship deal. If the new Antex soldering irons are still as good as this one, I'll be quite happy. This has been really good and it's done such a lot of work because once upon a time when I worked on ham and tone wheel organs, which required a lot of soldering, this was the iron I used. And just for the record, it actually went through three mains plugs, which got broken because it just kicked about in my workbox. Here's a direct comparison between the old and the new. The new one's at the bottom. It's very similar, but the head of it is slightly different. The fins are different. And now, here is yet another Antex soldering iron. The top one is a 15 watt soldering iron, ideal for soldering small things like LEDs. The larger 25 watt iron is good for general purpose, and you can get them with more power than this, but I find 25 watts to be just about right for what I need. If I need any more heat, I use a different type of soldering iron. If you're going to buy an Antex soldering iron, then buy one of these. I recommend them for two reasons. One is, the sponge in the bottom, once it's soaked in water, is great for cleaning the tip. And the shaped wire coil, where the soldering iron fits, does two things. It holds the soldering iron, and it also dissipates some of the heat. And a quick health and safety warning, this metal coil does get hot, so don't touch it when the soldering iron's been anywhere near it. 
It's common sense, I know, but by the questions I get asked, I really don't think there's much of that left. I'm about to show an example of simple soldering. The first thing to do is to remove the insulation from the cable. For this, I'm using a small pair of side cutters. You need to practice a little bit. Too much pressure and you'll cut the main cable. Too little pressure and it doesn't work. I'm making a pair of fly leads that I will eventually solder onto the track that will each support 20 LED lights. I would not do the job this way if I was soldering this to a tag strip with a hole in it. I would simply twist the wires together, wrap them around the tag strip and then solder the entire assembly. Either way, the first thing you need to do is tin the iron, which is what I'm currently doing. I'm holding the pieces of wire in a pair of crocodile clips on one of these very useful stands that sits on the bench and holds things. After tinning the iron, I apply it to the piece of wire, but then I apply the solder to the piece of wire as it's raised to the same temperature as the tip. That is how you do it. This is something that you may not have thought of. If you hold the piece of insulation in the crocodile clip too close to the heat source, then the heat of the soldering melts the insulation and it looks like this, which is very unprofessional and no good at all. It's important to always hold the piece of wire well away from where it's going to be getting hot. It's a good idea to hold the wire in the crocodile clip like this. In fact, just like you would if you were holding it in your fingers. You wouldn't be able to hold the insulation so close to the heat source. After melting the insulation on purpose in the first attempt, I just started again. I cut the wires to the same length, then repeated the process. The main power supply wires from the dynamo and the outlets that go to each of the plugs on the side of the box fit into the block connector on this regulator. But this is not a good way of doing it. You can pull them out really easily. This is the way I would do it. I twist two pairs of wires together and once again with the iron tinned I apply the solder to the wire, not to the tip. If this resin cord solder melts and flows, then everything's OK. If it doesn't, the joint isn't hot enough. I didn't need to support the thicker wire. As you can see, that has been soldered. After the soldering, I cut each of these pieces of wire to exactly the right length to fit into this connector. And here, with the help of a small screwdriver, I'm fitting them in place. I don't think these would come out of the block if I pulled on them really hard the block would probably break off the circuit board, so I won't do that. This should be a long-lasting and very strong electrical connection. Here I'm doing a test fit of the regulator to the inside of the mahogany box, and it fits perfectly. With the help of the brass straps, this mahogany box screws down onto two rails that are soldered to the inside of the canopy. The mounting rails lift the mahogany box away from the canopy and this allows for sufficient ventilation to take place around the regulator. Back to the soldering, here you see the point of the moistened sponge, which can be removed, cleaned and then refitted. I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but the golden rule for silver soldering and soft soldering is cleanliness. Before concluding this first episode, it's time to test the 15 watt iron. I plugged it into the mains and waited until it got hot, then I tinned the bit and wiped it on the wet sponge in the holder. This iron is now ready for the job of soldering all of the LEDs onto the canopy. I'm not ready to do that just yet because I have far too many jobs on the go. Unfortunately, none of which require the use of a soldering iron. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.